All right, here we are. Skeptical Hippo Podcast, episode three. This is like the third fucking rerun of this podcast. It really shouldn't be episode three. It should really be like episode 38 <laughs> or something crazy. You, you, probably even in the 40s. I could, I could just kind of like bail and just say that this is like season three of the Skeptical Hippo Podcast, but that's not what I'm going to do because that's just, that's cringe. That's not really what this is. This is... This is a manifestation of me starting a podcast three times because the first two times I started it, I stopped doing it. And I don't want to stop doing it, so I'm doing it again, and hopefully this time it sticks. I think the first two times I did the podcast, I was hoping that it would get a lot of views. I don't know why. I, I was hoping for views. It was like there's something like view related to it. I wanted to like accumulate a following or something silly like that, and that's not... That's not what this is. This is just for me. This is this is for me and for anybody who wants to listen to me ramble about things. Uh, last week's episode, I made a comment. I said, if you at the very end of the podcast, like twenty minutes into it, I was like, "Yo, if you listen to the whole thing, type puta lechuga into um, into the comment section to let me know if you finished the whole thing." And last week, we got an astonishing. Zero comments. <laughs> Technically, we got one comment from George, um, but that comment's not visible to me or to anybody because instead of writing puta lechuga, he wrote something like cunt lettuce, and YouTube did not like that. And uh, I only know that the comment's there because he, he sent me a text telling me that he made a comment, but... I, I tried finding that comment and like YouTube says that there's one comment and I cannot find that damn comment anywhere. So I believe George because YouTube hiding a comment because of profanity sounds like something that YouTube would do. And yeah. So shout out to everybody else who made it <laughs> through, through the rest of the podcast last week. Um, I'm going to do the same thing this week. I'm going to say something at the end of this episode and I'm going to be like, yo, like if you made it this far, type it in and you'll get, you'll get something. I don't know. I promised a, a hug last episode to the person who would write something. I promised a hug this week. I don't know. I'm not, I'll think of it later. I'm going to procrastinate on it. That's what I do. I'm, I'm not going to, I don't have something for you yet, but it'll happen. There'll be something there. Uh, I'm late. This is supposed to come out Friday. Today's Saturday. It's going to come out Saturday. I'm sorry to my loyal fan base that this is coming out a day late. Yesterday, I got distracted by YouTube. I was on YouTube all day. And that shit fucking sucked. That's I swear, that's like the worst way to live a day is to just be on your phone just staring at a screen all day. You know, like I, like I feel like today it's the iPhone and like the laptop, like YouTube, Instagram, social media, everything like that. But I guess even like years and years ago, I guess like before I was born, that was still like the TV, you know, like that was, people, people have been doing this, distracting themselves for a while now. I guess it used to be the TV. Now it's just YouTube. Fuck, YouTube's addicting. I don't, no way the TV is better than YouTube. You know, YouTube's the shit. Um. I got off Instagram, deleted it. I even put a little, I put a thing on my computer that doesn't allow me to see anybody's feed on Instagram, which kind of like helps part of the problem. Like the main problem was that I would keep refreshing my, my page to see like the view count or the like count on my most recent post. And that was my big problem. Not really what, I mean, I guess like looking at the feed and looking at other posts was a big problem because as soon as I was like finished looking at how many views my post got, I would just go on my feed and just scroll. And I could scroll that shit for like for like hours, man. It's so easy. So yeah, I made the move off Instagram. I'm off it. I'm trying to stay off of it. And I swear to God, um the temptations that I've had to go onto Instagram are crazy, man. It's like, I'm so addicted to that shit. My body wants to open up Instagram so bad, so badly. My body wants to go on Instagram and that shit is so, 
like if your body wants to do something that bad like th- there's a problem there like i wish my body wanted to work out as badly as my body wanted to go on instagram you know i would be shredded <laughs> Like, I've been saying this about Ben and Jerry's. I was like, I wish I wanted a career as badly as I wanted Ben and Jerry's because I would be killing it right now. So ben and Jerry's is great, but fuck, dude. I feel like shit after it. Same with Instagram. I guess Instagram and Ben and Jerry's are the exact same thing. All right? No difference. Addictive as fuck. I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm done with Instagram. I'm going to say it. I don't know how I'm going to manage to do the Instagram thing just because like I I gotta post content on there you know whenever I do a set I get like a decent joke in there I want to post it because I think it's good for the career and good to like maybe start building an audience and getting jokes out there and shit but shit like it's hard it's hard to not care about the views so I, I guess I figured you know I'll make next time I make a post I'll post that shit and forget about it and that that's what I'm gonna try to do I did laughing skull on on Tuesday and I told a little joke about George George wants to hear the joke really badly I swear man like I was the joke kind of turned out pretty good like so the set was pretty much this the set was I did my you know chemo joke which I've, I've never opened with that joke before and i'm never opening with that joke again what a terrible joke to open a set with like the, the i'm talking about the, like the progress pictures slash like chemo joke it, fuck terrible jo- like that's that's more of a closer i can't be opening with that it's like it's too unsettling <laughs> it's like barely even a funny joke i don't even know why like it's a good closer i think just because it's it's a fun little thing i don't know it's not a good opener Chick Fil A cow is more of like an opener, you know. But even even Chick, I don't really like saying the Chick Fil A cow joke anymore. But anyway, so laughing school Tuesday, I opened with the chemo joke, terrible idea, and then I transition over to this joke about George, and then um, and then I closed with a joke that I made about my dad killing himself. <laughs> quite a brutal set in the sense that like the set actually wasn't bad like the jokes kind of went over pretty decently but like quite a dark set for sure like within four minutes you're telling a chemo joke and then you're telling a suicide joke (laughs) god damn the george joke is funny i swear i've changed the joke a little bit since the last time i said i would i would love to just tell the premise on the podcast right now but funny enough is like george is my only listener and I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil it, because Laughing Skull did record my set on Tuesday, and I got my video on Wednesday, and the audio came off, came in all fucked up for the first time ever. By the way, like Laughing Skull has been great with the videos and, and all that shit, but for the first time ever, you know, the guy Andrew George, that's the guy's name, he sent me. a an email he was like yo here's the video but it came out all fucked up next video is on us i was like all right well i watched the video i was barely able to hear anything i heard a very like you could hear a little tiny bit but it's nowhere near the quality that it's necessary to like post on instagram like it's it's way below what the standard is so there's no way i can post it so i was like yo all right that's dope uh that, that's that's okay you know that the audio came in all fucked up can i come in next week and do my set again and he was like yeah sure so i'm doing laughing skull twice in a week which is fucking unheard of for me i've least amount of time that i've had in between a laughing between two laughing skull sets is like a month and a half so the fact that i'm able to do it twice within six days is fucking wild i'm super excited to go back there and and perform again and then hopefully the video comes out decent this time i'm sure he got the microphone thing all fixed up and shit um i think i think it's for the better that the video came out fucked up because i added a couple things to the george bit and i also changed around a couple of things for the suicide bit and i think that both of the bits are probably better now because of it i also changed the way that like i'm gonna deliver some of the lines that i'm saying and uh i don't know dude like i notice whenever i look look at myself on stage like i'm I have like the 
urge to not smile. And, and like, I'm just not smiling a lot when I'm on stage. And I think that's probably more, more fun for an audience to watch a comic that's smiling than the comic who's just like deadpan the entire time. And like a, a lot of the things that I'm saying don't require a deadpan delivery. And for some reason, like I, I, I go up there and I, I just say it straight faced and that's the way I do it. But and like, I'm sure like sometimes that can elevate a joke, but also sometimes that could like deteriorate a good joke. And I think it kind of like influences the audience to laugh a little more when the comic is laughing. And I've even heard like really good comics talk about, you know, it's okay to laugh on stage. And sometimes I just got to take their own advice. And, you know, I look at myself doing bits and I'm just like deadpan. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it could afford some laughter from me on stage. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, especially for the George bit, you know, I'm, I think it's okay because it's so silly. It's so silly. It's a stupid little joke. Like, it's not even, George, you want to hear it so bad, bro. Like, I'm I'm looking forward to showing it to you. It'd be really funny if I tell it on Monday and I just fucking bomb with it. Like just no laughter at all. That'd be awkward. Like I'd be like, yo, here's the joke <laughs> that we've been talking about. It it's fucking sucks, but <laughs> coffee. Yeah, now the joke's decent. It's okay. So like the way that I presented the joke on on Tuesday. It's really like an amateur joke. It's an amateur joke, but it was funny. But it's an amateur joke, you know? And amateur jokes can be funny, but there's a difference between an amateur joke and like a pro-level joke. Like an amateur joke is just like... I feel like an amateur joke is simple, like a simple misdirection, you know? And there's different kinds of humor, but like, let's just say a simple misdirection would be like an amateur joke. And there's misdirection all the time in comedy. That the misdirection doesn't make it amateur. But I think the part that made that the joke amateur was that it was just like one simple misdirection, and that was it. Like the bit was over after that. And what I've done is I've added a few lines to it, and I've added a couple more little misdirections in there. And I think that the addition of the few new things I added can change the level, the quality of the joke. Um, I don't know if the new things I added are going to get any laughter and that would suck if they didn't get any laughter, you know, if it was just silence to me, I think it's funny. Like the new stuff that I added is funny, but I've learned to not have any confidence in new material at all. And, you know, just wait to see, like gauge it with the audience and see what they think. So many times I've, I've came up with jokes and premises that I thought were hilarious and I told it on a stage and just got fucking silence. And then there were times where I didn't really think that a bit was crazy good, but I, f I want to fuck around with it on stage anyway. And then sure enough, it fucking kills. So, which actually like the, the George joke, I thought that it would do well on Tuesday, but it did like as good as I could have hoped for it to do. Like maybe even a little better. Like I got a really good reaction f for it on Tuesday. Super happy about that. So hopefully fingers crossed uh, this upcoming Monday when I do that joke and then add the new lines to it. Hopefully that it comes out pretty good and I could throw it up on the Instagram and not get fucking re-addicted to that stupid, evil, satanic fucking piece of shit app. Oh my God, that thing's terrible. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, that's enough comedy talk, even though I might get into some later. Um, ANN, American Nystagmus Conference. This week, a week from today, today is Saturday, doing the conference next Saturday. In seven days, I will be in Nashville, Tennessee, getting ready to do my talk. Turns out my talks are like 4 or 5 p.m. I thought I was going to be later. I thought I was going to be at like 7 or 8. I had to, I have to confirm with some people what time I'm going to be going up. But yeah, um, literally as soon as I'm done recording this podcast and throwing it up on YouTube, I'm going to put some time into into that talk and uh, I figured best thing I can do is probably do the talk like 12 times like between 10 and 15 times you know in my house uh, for like 50 minutes a pop and every single time I finish it like evaluate it see what I could have done better what I, what I could take away different questions I could ask different jokes I could throw in there yada yada like things like that and then take take that and then 
implement them in the next time that I give the talk in my room. Really, technically, I'm in Halia's room. But, yeah, and do that between 10 and 15 times. And then ideally, like, you know, by the time I'm doing it at the conference, nothing that I say is going to be foreign, and I'm going to have, like, a pretty good grasp on the flow of the talk and the, the, the content matters of the talk. And just ideally, like, a more... I'll, I'll be more comfortable doing the talk. So, yeah, yeah, fingers crossed that goes well. I really don't want to fucking bomb. I really don't want to bomb. And it's like, it's so much easier to, for me, it's easier to go do stand up in, fr in, in front of a room than it is to go give a talk. Cause, like, at least if I'm doing stand up, I can kind of like gauge how I'm doing. If I'm doing a talk, it's like they're going to be silent anyway. So, I don't know. I'm going to throw some some jokes in there for sure some jokes for my routine i'm also gonna do some crowd work you know some crowd questions and shit you know I'll, there's gonna be a q a for like the last 10 minutes of my talk last 10 or 15 minutes i'll let them ask me questions but like throughout the talk i want to spread out some questions that i'm directing towards the audience and get some uh interaction going i think it'll be like a good idea to tell the audience you know at the beginning that i'm going to be asking them some questions and then ideally that will influence them to be more attentive and be more focused on the talk. I don't know. I just don't want, I don't want to bore people. Like I don't, I don't want to bore people. And I don't want to like shit myself. I really don't want to shit myself. I feel like, like that would be stinky and yeah, I don't want to smell that when I'm on stage. Um, yeah. I tried getting up at Zany's over there. They haven't responded to me, but I should probably hit them up again. Just see if there's a way that I can, get a set over the weekend um yeah i don't i don't fucking know dude like th that's probably the end of this i don't know what else i'm supposed to add here i i don't even know how long i did for the podcast um this is a short one it's a little short one i just i had to make sure that i did it i also have to make sure that i do it next week you know because I'm, I'm leaving on friday so i'll probably have to film on film this shit on wednesday or thursday and schedule it for friday something like that um, all right, yeah, if you made it this far, the fuck, uh, yeah, if you made it this far, comment, just comment George, that's it, comment the name of my only listener, <laughs> uh, maybe even next week I'll play the, like, the little George joke that I did, and, uh, yeah, also, like, I'm, I'm kind of, like, deciding whether or not I want to do video, I do want to do video, but I also I feel like like I mentioned on the first episode that having the camera on me really kind of like makes me insecure, and I not only insecure but like it, it it's hard to talk as freely as it is to talk when the camera is not on you than when the camera is on you. It's just like the camera just makes it fucking harder. I don't know. Like I, I feel obligated to look into the camera. Meanwhile, right now I can look wherever the fuck I want and. I feel like when I get, whenever I could look wherever I want, I could talk more freely. It's like, yeah, dude, it's hard to look straight into a camera and talk freely. Then it, it, it just is. It's, it's fucking harder. The cameras suck. I don't like cameras. All right. Uh, yeah. If you made it this far, comment George. I don't fucking know. Uh, yeah, that's it. This is over. I'll see you guys next week for episode four.